Hello everyone, my name is Ayin. I'm a post BDSD patient. So today I would like to share my story. Few years back, I encountered an accident that left me traumatized until I couldn't even cross the road properly. I still remember that I was having an argument with Shafi, my best friend. The things that will make me regret till my entire life happened in the next second. Shafi was crossing the road angrily and didn't notice there was a car. And the car hit him and Shafi died. I lost the most important person in my life on that day. After that, whenever I want to cross the road, the memories hit me and make me terrified. I started to be antisocial, not talking with anyone, and keep on blaming myself until I couldn't even concentrate on studying. I cried a lot when I was alone and still think that it's my fault. I would think that what if I did not argue with him on that day? Will the story change? One day, I felt so exhausted until I saw a staircase. I think it's good to end my life so that I will stop blaming myself and everything will end. I went to seek help from doctor after my encouraged me to do so. stress disorder and it's a disorder that develops in some people who have experienced some shocking or scary or dangerous event like a car accident we experienced before. It's natural to feel afraid. During this, after a traumatic situation, there is part of the body's fight or flight response which helps us to avoid or respond to the potential danger. So let me explain more about PTSD to you. PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder, is a mental health condition that can develop after experiencing or witnessing a traumatic event. It is characterized by a range of symptoms that can significantly impact a person's daily life. Biologically, PTSD involves changes in the brain and nervous system. The stress response system, which includes the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and adrenal glands, becomes dysregulated in individuals with PTSD. This dysregulation can lead to an overactive stress response, causing heightened arousal and reactivity to potential threats. Genetically, there is evidence that certain genetic variations may increase the risk of developing PTSD. For example, Variations in genes involved in regulating the stress response, such as the FKBP5 gene, have been associated with an increased vulnerability to PTSD. At the molecular level, PTSD is associated with alterations in gene expression and changes in the structure and function of brain regions involved in emotional processing and memory. Chronic stress and trauma can lead to epigenetic modifications, which can affect how genes are expressed and contribute to the development and persistence of PTSD symptoms. Overall, PTSD is a complex condition that involves biological, 
genetic, and molecular changes. Understanding these underlying mechanisms is crucial for developing effective treatments and interventions for individuals with PTSD. Cognitive Processing Therapy CPT is a trauma-focused psychotherapy designed to treat PTSD. Cognitive Processing Therapy CPT is one specific type of cognitive behavioral therapy. It is a 12-session psychotherapy for PTSD. CPD teaches you how to evaluate and change the upsetting thoughts you have had since your trauma. By changing your thoughts, you can change how you feel. Firstly, treatment begins with psychoeducation regarding PTSD thoughts, and emotions. The patient becomes more aware of the relationship between thoughts and emotions and begins to identify automatic thoughts that may be maintaining the PTSD symptoms. The patient writes an impact statement that details current understanding of why the traumatic event occurred and the impact it has had on beliefs about self, others, and the world. Next, the patient begins more formal processing of the trauma as the patient writes a detailed account of the worst traumatic experience, which the patient reads in the next session to try and break the pattern of avoiding thoughts and feelings associated with the trauma. The therapist uses Socratic questioning and other strategies to help the patient question his or her unhelpful thoughts about the trauma, for example, self-blaming thoughts in order to modify any maladaptive thinking. Finally, once the patient has developed skills to identify and address unhelpful thinking, she or he uses those skills to continue evaluating and modifying beliefs related to traumatic events. At this point, the therapist is helping the patient develop the ability to use these adaptive strategies outside of treatment to improve overall functioning and quality of life. Therapists may particularly focus on safety, trust, power, control, esteem and intimacy as these are all areas that can be affected by traumatic experiences. CPD can be delivered both individually and in structured group sessions. Regardless of modality, patients will have out-of-session practice assignments. CPD was originally developed with the written trauma account as one component of treatment, but sometimes it is delivered without this and more emphasis is placed on cognitive techniques. Eye movement desensitization and reprocessing or for short, EMDR is a type of therapy that is fascinating but proven effective and might just change your life. EMDR is a type of treatment where patient will focus on the trauma memory while experiencing bilateral stimulation like eye movements or tapping sound. It helps our brain to reprocess the traumatic or painful memory in a healthier way. In easier way, we can say that EMDR is just like a workout for our brain, helping it reprocess those difficult memories. EMDR is an individual therapy, 1 to 2 session per week, for a total of 6 to 12 sessions or even less. So, how does EMDR therapy works? EMDR therapy uses a structured 8-phase approach, which are Phase 1. History taking. Phase 2. Preparing the patient. Phase 3. Assessing the target memory. Phase 4 to 7. Processing the memory to adaptive resolution. And lastly, Phase 8. Evaluating treatment results. EMDR started with history taking, in which the full history of the patient will be taken. This is to identify targets of treatment, which include past memories, current triggers and future goals. After that, patient will be taught different ways of handling emotional distress to help them calm themselves when they are stressed or having anxiety during the sessions. For example, the therapist will teach them deep breathing technique and progressive muscle relaxation, which can give calming effect to the patient. Next, patient will focus and talk about their painful memory that has been haunting them. While they are sharing their trauma, they're also watching something moving in front of them, such as moving pendulum or ticking clock. These are known as bilateral stimulation. Repetitive eye movement can give calming effect to the patient, making the storytelling process become lots more easier. It proves that the action arises out of emotion due to that traumatic event is irrelevant. This is the sensitization process.
Memories that are associated with that painful event can start to feel less intense and less overwhelming during the therapy. This is due to the reprocessing process. It changes emotions and feelings that are associated with those traumatic events. Patient will feel better about themselves and not blaming themselves as much as before. In conclusion, EMDR is one of the effective treatment for PTSD. Typically, EMDR therapy doesn't take that long, usually 6 to 12 sessions or even less to recover from the traumatic event. And good news is that EMDR doesn't involve any drugs. It only helps our brain to reprocess traumatic events in a better and healthier way. Another pharmacological treatment plan for PTSD is selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRI, when it is combined with therapy, can be a powerful tool for healing. This is our brain. Imagine these brain cells are like messengers, communicating with each other using chemicals called neurotransmitters. One important neurotransmitter is serotonin, which plays a role in mood, sleep and appetite. When it comes to communication between brain cells, here's what happens, the presynaptic neuron, the one sending the message, releases serotonin into a tiny gap called synaptic cleft. Serotonin binds to receptors on postsynaptic neuron, the receiving cell. This binding triggers a signal within the receiving cell. However, serotonin does not stay in the cleft forever. Most of it gets reabsorbed back into the presynaptic neuron through a special protein called reuptake transporter. This reuptake ensures that serotonin effects are balanced. But what happens if this system is disrupted? This can lead to a deficiency of serotonin available in the cleft, since the reuptake transporter removes serotonin from the synaptic cleft too quickly. A lack of serotonin activity has been linked to various conditions, including depression and anxiety, which are experienced by PTSD patients. This is where the reuptake inhibitors come in. They act like tiny roadblocks, preventing the reabsorption of serotonin by the nerve cells. By doing this, the reuptake inhibitors allow more serotonin to circulate in the brain. This can improve communication between those nerve cells, potentially leading to a more positive mood and reduced anxiety. Medications like sertraline, Peroxidine and fluoxidine have all shown promise in reducing these symptoms and improving overall well-being. It's important to remember SSRI take time to work, sometimes up to two to four weeks, while waiting, some side effects like nausea, insomnia, diarrhea, headache, tremors and decreased appetite may occur. However, these can be monitored and managed by a doctor. Importance of Trauma-Informed Care in Supporting Individuals Affected by PTSD Trauma-Informed Care shifts the focus from what's wrong with you to what happened to you. A trauma-informed approach to care acknowledges that healthcare organizations and care teams need to have a complete picture of a patient's life situation past and present in order to provide effective healthcare services with a feeling orientation. Can potentially improve patient engagement, treatment adherence, and health outcomes, as well as provider and staff wellness. It can also help reduce avoidable care and excess costs for both the healthcare and social service sectors. Trauma-informed care seeks to realize the widespread impact of trauma and understand paths for recovery. Recognize the signs and symptoms of trauma in patients, families, and staff. Integrate knowledge about trauma into policies, procedures, and practices. Actively avoid re-traumatization. Trauma-informed care approaches in workplace, educational or health care settings promote well-being, adaptation and resilience in those who have been exposed to prior traumatic experiences. They aim to ensure that policies, procedures and environments support safety, healing, empowerment and recovery, as well as reduce practices that make us stress or remind people of prior traumatic experiences. For patients, trauma-informed care offers the opportunity to engage more fully in their health care, develop a trusting relationship with their provider, and improve long-term health outcomes. Trauma-informed care can also help reduce burnout among health care providers, potentially reducing staff turnover. Thank you for listening, and I hope my story can help those who are suffering PTSD right now. Thank you.